Hey guys, today I'm covering the topic kerf. When I first started out, I'd cut things out like this for coasters and not be bothered about kerf. It didn't affect me. Until I started trying to attach two pieces of material together and found that I couldn't get them square no matter how hard I tried. As a person who uses a laser cutter a lot, I then had to address this issue. Now, for some of you woodworkers, you would know kerf as the material that is removed from a saw blade or a bandsaw blade or something along that lines. Uh, this type of kerf is actually similar, but this is the material that's taken away with the laser. When this is cutting, it cuts away the material, but it actually cuts it at, at a slight angle. Now, the reason being for this is you, the laser's source starts as a beam now you focus the beam through then a lens and it goes tapered so it comes down to a point so a focus point where you're trying to power on that material and cut it away so no matter what you do this will never fit together square unless you've got an extra operation i took these two pieces and glued them together without doing anything else to them and they are not square now you could square it up as you glue it and then that void, that taper would fill with glue and then glue square. But to fit together naturally without doing anything else, it will never be square. So let's cover how I compensate for that and what you need to be aware of and how you can get around these things and also the pitfalls uh, there is some scenarios whereby you might compensate for kerf and actually then it leads you into other problems in your design i've recently discovered these great little jigs uh, these are from thingiverse i will send you a link to it you can then generate ones for various different thicknesses and sizes of material. I've mentioned this before in other previous videos, but this is important when it comes to designing and when you start in light burn, which is, again, measure your materials. Get yourself a good set of verniers or even a micrometer. If you've got one lying around, use one of those. But you need to measure your material find out what thickness it is so I've measured this material and it's 3.4 mil thick so I've then generated that in the, that thingiverse template it then gives me what well, gives me one template that then has all the parts on it to compensate uh, you can then generate that cut it on your laser and then you can now work your way through using this to work out how much kerf compensation you need to adjust for on depending on what type of fit you want so essentially you are testing each side of this so you start with zero kerf and as you can see here you've got a little bit of wobble you can then go to 0 0.05 kerf and that starts to become a bit tighter now that, that will hold look so that starts to become a bit tighter move around again on this template you've got 0.1 kerf now for me that just you can just hear the noise squeaking in um, that's just about right I'd say if you were gluing a box joint on a corner Point 0.1 for me on this material is ideal uh, and that's just just loose enough to put glue in so that you don't end up with a dry joint um, but also tight enough to hold now if you wanted to go for no glue at all maybe you'd go for a 0.15 kerf and this is where you'd have to really like go for it and push it in so that's quite tight so then that's 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 no glue 
and then you wouldn't need any glue on that I don't think you could even possibly go to point two and that would make it really snug but that's a good snug joint then um, you can quickly test that the fit by um, using the slots so that's like 0 0.3 you can feel that's quite loose move it round and so on just they're the quick test slots you can make these then for each uh, material I've made another set that are the 6.3 mil this is another common material I use quite a lot so I've got these are the two materials I use a lot in my designs so when I want something stronger and bigger and thicker I tend to use 6.3 you can get thicker um, I'm yet to use thicker material you then also could then make sets of these for acrylic and wh whatever plastics you were cutting out now let's cover another one that was an issue which is if you were to compensate let's say as an example you were to have finger joints on the corner of your box and you wanted those to be a snug joint so you would use the kerf compensation in light burn which would compensate all your cut joints to that compensated kerf however then raises an issue whereby if you compensate for your kerf essentially your problem is then is let's say this has got finger joints on the side you've compensated for that that's brilliant but however what you've done then is made a tighter joint here but compensated the kerf on everything so this then slot gets smaller to compensate the kerf this then gets bigger because you've compensated for the kerf on this which then means actually that you're struggling to get this through so you're trying to push this through here it's then not going to go through because you've compensated on everything the kerf so you either then got to design this to be slightly bigger or longer to compensate for that increase or you'd have to sand away some material on this to get it to fit because if this was a joint in the middle of your design and then you've got finger joints on the corner here you, you've stuffed so you're trying to compensate for everything and then and then you get with parts that won't go together parts that do fit together and it all all ends up compromised so you have to think about what you're compensating for kerf and where you're doing it on this you would just compensate the outer cut layer with a kerf compensation you then have to add another layer and cut this out without kerf compensation so that this would fit in to that area so you can separate on layers what you compensate for kerf and what you don't compensate on kerf so you can see where this sort of gets the gray areas of and tricky design features where you've got to watch yourself when you're putting these things together and, and how they're going to assemble so guys i think that's about it that's covered all the topic um this is a fairly short video for me for once <laughs> but uh, yeah more to come if people are interested uh, put some comments below and i can also then either guide you in the right direction as to where to look for for more information for setting up your laser or I'll then run uh, uh, some episodes as to regards to setting up and how I've gone around to get my setup right for my Chinese laser cutter. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, give us a sub uh, and the support is greatly appreciated. Thank you.